I am so grateful that you decided to join me here today on February the 16th. Today has a lot going for it. It is what we call Fat Tuesday. I know we don't get to have all the celebrations that we normally have. We would normally have a pancake supper at the church. It is also the very last day in the season after Epiphany. It's not just the very last day in the season after Epiphany. Because it's the very last day in the season of Epiphany, that makes it the last day of Christmas. It is the last day of that Christmas cycle. And so our Christmas tree is coming down and it makes me really sad. But that also means that tomorrow is something really special. The beginning of the season of Lent that starts with Ash Wednesday. And so that is also an exciting time of the year as we are reminded of the great love that God has for you. So much that he would rather die for you than live without you. See, Christmas doesn't make any sense. Not without that season of Lent and ultimately Christ's death and resurrection. Well, that's what Lent is all about. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless us tonight as we open up your word and look forward to hearing what you want to speak to us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to write down a word that I've been saying over the course of the last couple of weeks. I actually, if you watched the uh, Sunday worship service, you will know I actually had you write this down in your sermon handout. But this is really an important word. Luminous. Luminous. Luminous is a word that is used to describe the coming together of things from heaven and things on earth. It's that middle ground. Well, we as Christians believe that Jesus Christ... is that luminous figure between heaven and earth. He brings it all together. And so there's a blending of those two things in Jesus Christ. He is the luminous character and figure in the world and in the Bible. And so we're, this, is, this is kind of the amazing thing about this day, Fat Tuesday. It's the coming together of Christmas and the coming together of Easter. It just is all kind of blending together as one right now. And uh, so this is kind of that day that we transition from Christmas. We transition then into the celebration of Easter that comes in a short time. And those things all come together in this luminous season on this day. And so when we read this passage for today, I want you to remember that while we just recently celebrated Christmas, Christmas makes no sense without understanding who Jesus Christ is. It is more than just a baby boy born in Bethlehem. That he came to, to light up the sky with his brilliance. And so let's read our lesson for today. St. Paul writes these words. If even our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Well, <laughs> Let me stop there a minute. And there's a context of this verse. This verse, um, or I should say a lectionary context to this verse. This verse is used in the reading on Transfiguration Day. Remember how Jesus went with his disciples, James and John and Peter, up to a mountaintop. And there he was transfigured before them. And they finally got to see his true glory that came from inside of him, that he is the glory of God. This is something that was not revealed to anybody else but James and John and Peter at that time. And they didn't know what to say. They were just flabbergasted. What in the world are we going to do? This is, this is God come to us. He's that, again, luminous character. But then uh, we are told that he was enveloped in a cloud. So oftentimes who God is is hidden from us. But what Paul is trying to say, it's not hidden from us because God is trying to keep himself from us. On the contrary, he sent Jesus Christ. Why? So that we might have God living amongst us and in our presence. But the reason why we don't see 
Jesus Christ, and we don't see him as that luminous figure that brings heaven and earth together, is because we've got too many other things going on in our lives. He's veiled from our eyes because we're busy. we got things to do. Our business needs to get tended to. we got baseball games we got to play. we got to watch the football games. we got to go here. we got to do there. We crowd God out of our lives. We miss out of this luminous figure, Jesus Christ, who's dwelling right in our midst. Okay? So that's what Paul is trying to say. If God is veiled from you, it's not because God has done it. It's because you are looking away. You're not paying attention. It goes on. So again, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In the case of the God of this world, who's blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Now, he says the God of this world. Well, um, who is the God of this world? Hmm. Hmm. We talked a little bit last week about Paul writing to the Corinthians and their problem. They had a major problem and a conflict going on between Christians. And that conflict was all about the rich people thought they deserved to be treated better than the poor people. What's the God of this world? <laughs> Anything that we give our heart to that is not Jesus Christ. And in this case, it's money. Any of those idols, it could be your country. We have this nationalistic spirit that's been going on these last years in our country, unabashedly by Christians. It's all about America. No, it's not all about America. It's about Jesus Christ. You and the United States is going to going to fall someday. Okay, every country does at some point. It's just a country. I love my country. I'm proud of being here. I'm sometimes ashamed of some Christians who want to make Jesus and our country merge into one. That's not the way this goes, okay? That's an idol. A nationalistic fervor. We've made an idol of our country. We people are willing to storm Washington for a president. Are you kidding me? You've made an idol of a president. You're going to kill somebody because of a guy who doesn't even know your name and doesn't care about you. You've made an idol of now a former president. What in the world is wrong with people? There's only one luminous figure in the world, and that's Jesus Christ. You've been blinded by money by a former president, by a nationalistic fervor. Open up your eyes. Look up. See Jesus Christ. Okay? This is the, this is the only thing worth giving your life for, not taking a life for. Jesus, you see, never asks us to take somebody's life. Jesus never asks us to create violence or wield woe. Jesus Christ just has come to love the world and bless the world. All right, let's go on. So this is what Paul is saying. Paul's saying the world just doesn't see God in this, this luminous figure of Christ because they have been so blinded by money, power, wealth. They've been blinded by a nationalistic fervor, by an ex-former president. In their case, the God of this world has blinded them, their minds, to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as slaves for Jesus Christ. You see, there is something absolutely wrong about wanting to try to be on top of the heap. That's the American spirit. But it's not the spirit of Jesus Christ. The spirit of Jesus Christ says, I'm here to serve you. Okay? I'm here to be servant. 
not to enforce my will upon you. It is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay. So we are called to reflect the light of Jesus Christ. So I want you to think for just a moment. Please, please. I'm not trying to be overly political here. I'm not advocating for a particular political solution of the world's problems. I think there are some better ways than others. All right, but they're all relativistic. None of them are going to get us to the justice of God. Okay? They all fall short in some way, right-wing solutions, left-wing solutions. It'd be better if we try to do things, think, things together. But I do want you to put your thinking cap on for a minute, okay? And I want you to picture whether or not Jesus is in, somebody carrying a Jesus save sign, but then at the same time goes into Washington and wants to storm the Capitol and seek out Nancy Pelosi and kill her. How is Jesus in that? Where's Jesus? Okay. How is that reflecting the light of Jesus Christ? You're trying to impose your will and kill somebody, and you're calling that Christianity? Jesus Christ calls us to submit. Jesus Christ calls us to be servant. Okay. Servants don't go and try to kill people. They don't storm the Capitol. They don't rejoice by carrying guns and putting in your face or by bashing in police officers' heads. This is crazy. I am calling you Christians because we have been in the presence of the luminous, the one and only luminous character of the world, the universe, Jesus Christ, to submit yourself and have your life transformed. Have his light shine in your heart, Paul says. I'm praying for a better year this year. I'm praying for a year of peace. I'm praying for a year where the church of Jesus Christ represents that peace because our hearts have had the light of Jesus shine, shined upon her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for shining your light upon our hearts. Transform our hearts, transform our lives. Help us to be servants, because it is in being a servant that your love is made known. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>